Hey guys, so I am really excited to do this video today. I teased this a little bit in a previous video when I was doing an outfit of the day. I was wearing, I've got so many jeans piled up in here. Um, I was wearing these jeans. They are my seven for all mankind, the skinny. And it's a very dark, blackened, um, oh gosh, they've got dog hair all over them. Very blackened, you know, bluish. And they've got a little bit of distressing on them. And I said, you know, I might want to distress them a little more. I'm pretty good at distressing. I'll do a distressing video. And then every day since then, people are like, when are you doing the distressing video? And I'm like, it's coming, I promise. And I'm really excited to finally do it. So we've all been there where we have tried to distress jeans ourselves, Probably unsuccessfully. And I would, before I get started, you know, I really just want to stress not to just go grab your nicest pair of jeans and do this. Maybe practice on a pair that you're not crazy about where you just need to do it and think, if these are ruined, I'm not gonna care. So start off like that because you really need to get kind of okay at it before you just jump into a good pair, obviously. So I've been distressing my own jeans for a long time, since like high school or college. And um, we'll get into the whole technique and I'll show you how I do it, but I wanna give you like an example and show you ones that I've done myself. So when I really got into it was when I was pregnant because it was so hard to find maternity jeans that are good, much less maternity jeans that are in a distressed style that you liked. And so many maternity outfits and tops were so plain, which I liked and that's what I kinda went for, that I wanted some jeans that had a bit of a, um, you know, the distressing adds texture. It adds a little bit of interest to your outfit. And there's so many different ways to do it. So these are my Citizens of Humanity. These are my maternity jeans. Oh, I love these. And then I distressed these. So you can kind of see I did them um, uh, in a little weird pattern. And then I did the same thing on the other side. And... You know, you'll notice that I didn't go all the way from knee to knee. I just kind of did it. When you put them on, it's going to stretch a little. But over time, you'll find that they'll just naturally wear in and get more and more. And I even did a little bit up here at the pocket. If you're going to do one like that, and we'll get into all these specifics in a little bit, you've got to be so careful because you've got to do it high enough where your pocket will cover it or else you'll have just like white thigh. In my case, it'll just be like your upper, you know, leg hanging out. Um, and then these, these were my favorite. And I wore these a ton. They're the Seven for All Mankind. Um, they're just the Seven for All Mankind. I got these all at Pee in the Pod. So, you see, I kind of just did these a little more simple. So I did one up at the pocket and I did one down at the knee. So, or a couple down at the knee. And you see how, to me, I feel like it looks really nice. I feel like it looks like a bottom that way, you know, and that's the point. That's what you want to do. And it's very easy. You can even do a little on the back, but I didn't get into that. Um, I find that there's a lot of things you need to take into consideration when you decide which pair to do. I would say if you're going to do this, just start with a pair that's maybe like um, this color. Ooh, probably a lot lighter than this. Or lighter, because if you do make a mistake or whatever, it's not going to show as much. I always say, like, if you're going to go in on distressing a black pair of jeans, which these are also maternity, these are distressed, but you'll see they're not full holes. Because when you wear black distressed jeans, you will see your skin. If you're like me and you're like white, white, you're going to see that through it. And you don't want, like, black and then, like, white dots all over. But it's nice to be able to see a little. You see, like, through the... Um, Things. So it's harder, I think, to distress black jeans correctly. You're going to do it over a large area, so maybe don't do those right away. I bought these like this. But that's what's hard, is figuring out um, when you're distressing denim, how to get that effect where it's a larger hole. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people kind of make a mistake. You may just like cut out the hole. I remember I did that when I was in high school. And the, what makes distressed jeans look good? are these little um, horizontal uh, threads. You see, so when you put them on, it looks like that. So before you start, you kind of have to understand like the makeup of a jean and what you're doing. <laughs> to mean to bird you. And what you're doing. So like, okay, if you want a hole like this, I made one cut here that, that was about that long. And then I made one cut here. I knew I wanted the area, just don't even look at that. I knew I wanted the area to be about that big. Don't make any vertical cuts at all, okay? Or you'll end up cutting all of these and you'll just have a gaping hole and then this will look ratty 
and just straight and wrong. So what you want to do, like if you were achieving this, is <laughs> achieving is such an achievement. Cut a hole or cut a strip right here, a slit right here, and then cut um, a smaller slit, maybe about that long, right there. And then it, this is going to be solid. It's just going to look like two strips. And then I'm going to show you how you kind of work those vertical fibers out to get that. You really don't need a lot of tools to do this. I don't use sandpaper. You see how it just kind of still looks dark around there? If I really wanted it to look light and worn, I could take sandpaper and get that look. But I don't like that. I just, I like it to look darker and I guess it just depends on what you're going for. So all I use are really sharp scissors. These are just kitchen scissors and a good pair of tweezers. I say a good pair, I'm not in focus. I say a good pair, but you also don't want to use like your best pair because it's probably going to make them pretty dull. You can start very small, like this pair. You see how it's just little bits, and um, I like that. And I was going to actually distress this pair, but I kind of like that these are very minimally distressed, so I'm going to keep these. I'm going to distress a different pair that's not distressed at all. And then, of course, this is nuts, so you can go really crazy on a pair of lighter jeans. But you see how what makes these so nice is that it has this. If it was just a gaping hole, you'd look crazy. So literally how they did this is it was one cut here, maybe one there and one there, just little, and then one at the bottom, and then they worked all the fibers out. Maybe just one here and there, just one slit here and there, and then, um, but, but what I'm saying is they're not cutting out a giant section. Okay, I'll explain. So you want to decide what you want first. You don't want to go in like doing it blindly. So be 100% sure of which pair you want. Like I said, that's why I'm not using that other pair because I really, I like those. So um, I had second thoughts about doing them. So I'm going to use this pair. It's a 7 for All Mankind Skinny. I have another pair like this. So if I, um, so it's not like I'm ruining a pair or changing, like, it's not like I'm going to think, oh, well now I need a pair that's not distressed. You know what I mean? Because I've got a pair like this, so it's not going to be a big deal. So what you want to do first, you want to get some chalk or something, I'm actually going to use this, this is just a little like cold like little eyeliner that's in a light color, um, just something that you can mark the jeans very lightly. So you want to put the jeans on, I'm wearing a dress so this is very easy, but what you want to do is you're putting them on so that you can see exactly where you want the holes to hit. There have been times when I have distressed, even some of those, no, yeah the white ones, there was one hole that ended up being like kind of above the knee a little higher than I wanted. <laughs> and it can be super hard to gauge that. So, you wanna put the jeans on, and that way you can tell exactly where you want the holes to be. So I wanna keep these, since I've got so many other ones that kind of have, this would be a really cute top. Maybe I could make this shirt into, or this dress into a top. Oh my gosh, I could totally do that. Look how cute this is. I could just tie it, like 80s, late 80s style. Do you guys remember those little like t-shirt rings? I had one that was like a shell. Okay, good lord, I'm like on so many tangents today. Okay, so what I want to do when you have really tight jeans, if you're going to do tight jeans like this, sometimes it can be dangerous to go above the knee because that can kind of bulge out. So what I'm going to do is I want my hole to fall right below the knee, which is kind of like those black denim jeans that I showed earlier. So from, you don't have to make a complete line. I'm just going to do one like that. And then I'm going to do a matching one on the other side, but you kind of sometimes want to vary the sizes. And if you're having a hard time coming up with a, um, such a good way to do it because you can just wipe it off if it's not. This is such like a creamy pencil. That's what I want to do. I don't want to go so crazy with these. That is my biggest tip. Don't try to cut corners and be really quick about it. I've never taken my pants off while I'm filming. Um, and don't ever cut corners and think, oh, I can eyeball where my knees are because that will never be where, where your knees are. It always ends up messing up. Okay. All right, so first you take your scissors, take your jeans. If you wanted to have that light look around, like where the fray is going to be, you can um, sandpaper them. I just, I hate that. I don't know why that just makes me cringe. Now to be sure that you don't blow through to the other side, just put your hand under it. Here are my two dots right there. So right in the middle, I'm just gonna make a little thing so I can get my scissors in. And I'm just gonna make 
a little slit to each edge. And then, so look, you have this slit, okay? You have to do more to it, we're not done. The slits are exactly where I marked them. If you're having a hard time like coming up with a design or like where you want it to be, you can literally go online and look at pictures of jeans like from Seven for All Mankind on the website. They always do really good distressed denim or any, any brand that's distressed and kind of see where their whole placement are, is, kind of see like little designs and you can do it yourself. I'm gonna retain those little lines. So since I want tiny slits, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go below this and I'm gonna cut another hole exactly the same parallel to it and I'm gonna make the hole a little bit smaller and I'll show you what it looks like. Now I've got two holes. The top one is the first one that we marked and then I want the actual like white thready part to be this width so as far wide as you want it you just make another little slit. Now if you wanted to do like giant holes you would kind of mark where you want the top to be, where you want the bottom to be and then make slit, 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 slit. You know what I mean? And then you kind of take the fibers out. So what you do next is we're wanting to get rid of this little piece, but we don't want to cut it because then you're going to have, it's going to cut all those fibers. So what I do is I just kind of go like this with my fingers and our goal is to get all of these blue fibers out. So I take the edge, I didn't do my nails today for this, I take the edge and I start fraying it like that. And you see, that's what we want. You see that little white thing that came about? That is our little fibers. So you don't want to break those. Just along the edges, I'm just kind of fraying the, um, the edges of that little part in the middle. I see some blue fibers. These little blue fibers that are in between it, you're gonna start um, taking them out. You see how it's just, they're just coming out, coming out, coming out. When I was pregnant, I remember doing this to my new jeans and I sat and literally worked on those white jeans. God, what jeans were they? Um, it wasn't the seven ones. I think it was the white one. I don't remember, but anyways, I sat and worked on them for like an hour and your nails will be like so blue. So don't do this after you have a manicure. And you can see how time consuming this is. So you see I'm just pulling, pulling, pulling. And um, you see what's happening is you're being left with that. Um, we want that to be all the way across. So, you can kind of take your nails and kind of work it back. The easiest thing to do though is to just take your, oh I didn't remove that nasty nail of nail polish. I removed all the other ones but the, I apologize. My nails are just such a hot mess. Um, so you just keep going and you keep pulling. It's kind of therapeutic. It's like knitting or something. It's just gonna, you're gonna be doing it for a while, so you need to just kind of get comfortable. And these white fibers that you see broken are the ones that I broke when I made that initial cut, and that's okay. They'll, they'll come out, and um, I'll show you how you kind of fray that edge in a minute. But what we're trying to do now is just get this whole line of stuff. I would kind of say don't plan on wearing these right away afterwards because they really will look best after you have done this and have ran them through a wash and a dry cycle. Sometimes, I know one time I was like really desperate to wear mine and I just ran it through the dryer. So you want to be kind of careful as you go. You don't want to break any of these horizontal threads because that's what really needs to stay intact to give them that good distressed look. I'm excited about these. I don't have any that look like this just at the knee. And distressed jeans, like, and then we can cut that or whatever. I'll, that's what I'll do because I want these to look more like sleek. Distressed, I don't want them to look like grody. Distressed jeans, like the other day I wore a pair of like distressed boyfriend jeans with my rock studs. And it was good. Okay, so honestly this is going to be so boring if I just show you this for an hour just picking these. I just want it to take an hour, but it'll probably take me about 15 more minutes to get both knees. And, um... Like I said, just kind of take your time with it, but you just have little kind of picking motions. Okay, so we have two sides done, and you 
think they look small, but you got to think these are really stretchy jeans. So it's going to look, um, they're going to look bigger. And this is the other side. You can see you've got all of those good uh, cross fibers. That's what you really are trying to say there. So what I would do next, since I want these to be more like sleek looking, is any of the white fibers that are frayed, you see those that look just kind of like straight, you want to take those off, or at least I do. If you really want like a heavily like distressed look and you don't care, then you can take those off. They will kind of unfray and some of these will break, you know, but they shouldn't, I mean, you'll be surprised. And then along this edge that looks really kind of freshly cut, what you can do is, like I said, this is where the, you don't need to have a manicure to do this comes in. I literally just take my thumbnail and I just go along and just kind of soften it up a bit and you may get another like white thread or two like that's whole that will come down and then you can kind of the bottom looks pretty good you just want it to look soft so I'm fraying the blue fibers um, that are still attached up through here so those aren't going to come out like the other ones did the only reason the other fibers came out was because they were cut from the top and the bottom so um, if you took sandpaper to this you would probably have a lighter faded effect around the hole and I don't want that. You know, I still want these to look somewhat nice. So then, these look like little holes, but just see it makes a big impact. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. This side looks really fresh. And leaving it fresh like that is a different look, too, that you may want to keep. Um, I think those black ones that I got looked a little fresh around the edges like that. But, um, but yeah, so I just, your fingernails are honestly the best thing to do this with because I don't want to tear them up with the tweezers and... Um, you, know, you just make them kind of look soft and you can even kind of pull those white threads that are, see there's another, that one's horizontal one that came out. You can kind of pull those white threads that are broken and it will give you a softer, um, a softer look. So I'll kind of show you what I mean down here. So then I just kind of go like that and you'll see there was a, see these broken, the broken white threads right there. Just pull them. It makes it look more soft. And that was a whole one. See, so I got another whole little thread. You don't want to cut the horizontal ones that are still whole, but if any of these little scragglers come out, um, you may want to cut those. But I, I do like pulling them. So see, that looks so much better. And then again, go back and cut. just the ones that are up on the side and then I'll try them on and show you what they look like all right so this is what they look like and you can see the holes ended up being obviously right where I marked them you know this is a more for these this is a more like sleek look that's just two matching holes which I like because I didn't have anything like that I had that on my new black ones but I didn't have a pair of denim ones that were like that so I think that's kind of fun rather than having them like all over the top it's kind of different but you can kind of see how I made those holes. So if you wanted to make it bigger, if you wanted to make them in different places, you could definitely do that over time. Little pieces are gonna come down and, you know, see like I just pulled another piece that's intact, like one of those um, horizontal pieces will come down and, you know, it'll, they'll just get better and better. So I really like these. It kind of kept with the sleek look of these skinny jeans. They didn't get too crazy, um, but it gave them a little bit of something, a little bit of interest. So guys, that is the basic hole, I guess, for a um, for a distressed look. Every every type of distressed look kind of starts with that, and um, it's just easy. And like these, I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna sit for three hours and show you. If you were gonna do something big, you're gonna have to sit for hours. But at least now you know how. And as big as you want them, you can do it. Like just for an example doing this, which is exactly what I showed you, it's the same motion. This is the same motion, I just literally cut the holes farther apart, or I cut the slits farther apart. So now maybe after seeing me do that, you kind of understand how I got this. Um, I need to go back and cut some of these little guys. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm excited about these, they're just different, they're a little sleek, and I like that. Um, see, I've already got like little things that are kind of coming out that I need to cut again, and more little white, horizontal threads that are coming down that'll gradually get more and more so that's awesome and what I'll do is 
uh, wash these, throw them in the dryer, and they'll get even better, like as, you know, as it gets kind of worked in. So, a very basic distressed look, but it is the actual motion or the actual like technique that you would use to distress something much larger. I hope you guys kind of see how to make the basic hole or whatever to kind of start it out and then you can do literally whatever you want. There will be fibers everywhere. <laughs> so I've got to clean up in here. Um, but anyways, I hope that y'all enjoyed it again. Do not do anything crazy and do this to like the one good pair of jeans you have or if you've gotten a brand new pair for school, you don't want to give your mom a heart attack if you, you know, if you do it yourself. Um, if they're like your school jeans or anything like that. So definitely don't do that. Uh, try it out on a pair that's old that you don't mind ruining if something weird happened or if you didn't get the placement just right. But my biggest tip is try them on beforehand because the holes will never be where you think they will be. Mark them. Um, especially stretchy jeans like that. Like when I was doing the actual holes, they were tiny, but then when I put them on, they get big. So um, yeah, mark them beforehand, take your time, and pick a pair of jeans that you won't be heartbroken if they... Um, mess up and don't pick like the nicest pair that you have like <laughs> pick a pair maybe even that may already be a little distressed and you can distress them more so that's it I hope that y'all enjoyed it and I will talk to you very soon bye